In this video, I'm going to show you how you can run TensorFlow classifier inside your Docker, inside your Windows, with as less effort as possible. Hey guys, IT guy Michael here and welcome to another video of our channel. In this channel, we talk about artificial intelligence, computer science, technology in general. If you are a fan of this topic, please consider smashing the subscribe button, hitting the like button, leaving a comment and following me on the social media. Now without further ado, let's jump right to the video. So in this video, we're going to talk about classification using a TensorFlow framework, which is a Python framework running inside the Docker inside the windows. If you are a fan of artificial intelligence as me, you know that in the past it was quite handy to run the TensorFlow on your Windows machine. But right now you are able to run it as simple as triggering few commands, which you can find linked in the description below on my GitHub profile. Now for the purpose of this video, I ain't gonna go into details of the network which we're gonna use for predictions. If you are interested in this kind of stuff, please leave a comment down in the comment section. Now in this video, we're gonna to use a network which is called the mobile net version 2. This neural network is able to predict based on image one of the 1001 objects which it was trained on. You can think of it this way. If you have a classifier which is able to predict whether on the picture is a dog or a cat, you are predicting two classes. In case of a mobile net v2, you are able to predict 1001 classes. Now, if you are not interested in the theoretical part, I will put the theoretical part at the end. And now we'll code the technical part where I'm going to show you how you can run this network in your computer locally. So right now I'm in the folder called TensorFlow, which is dedicated for this example. And inside there you can find the specification of the Docker Compose. If you are not familiar with Docker Compose or Docker in general, I highly recommend my previous videos in my YouTube channel. So you will be more familiar with this. So if you click on the Docker Compose.yaml, you can see that I only specify one service, which is a TensorFlow service. Yeah, the name of the service can be whatever, even IT guy Michal. There I specify the build for this service which resides inside the folder called TensorFlow folder which is uh, in the directory which I'm working in right now. And I'm mapping the ports from the container 8888 outside of the container 8888. And I'm also mapping the bind volume of the folder TensorFlow folder directly to the folder inside the image called DF, right? So if I look inside the folder TensorFlow for, folder here, you will see that I have here some examples uh, where I'm using the mobile net v2, which I'm going to present you in this example. And then also I have the requirements txt with the needed packages. If you click on the requirements txt, you will see that you only need one additional library, which is the TensorFlow Hub, which allows you to import pre-trained model, uh, which in this case is the mobile net v2. Right. If you want to use something else, I don't know, pandas or whatever, you can just add it here and run the container the same way, right? And don't forget to rebuild, of course. If you look inside the Docker file, the only thing which I'm doing is that I'm specifying the base image for my image, which in this case is a TensorFlow, TensorFlow version latest Jupyter image. And the fun fact is that it was created just 11 days ago because before guys from TensorFlow were using the nightly version which had some bugs and it wasn't working properly and as efficient as I was thinking but right now we have the stable version here and as you can see I'm copying the content of the folder inside the folder TF and then I'm running the pip install a requirements txt as you can see there is no cmd command because out of the box these tensorflow uh, latest jupyter will run the jupyter notebook after you run this image right so then we can trigger it by opening a new terminal and putting docker compose up so right now i'm running the service so if i click here and i go to the localhost 888 you will see the dam inside the jupyter notebook in this case yeah i'm a big fan of jupyter lab but guys from google like notebooks so if you click on the image classification in Pine B, which is a notebook for this, you will see the code which I'm using to present you this example. These are just the libraries which we're gonna work with. And here in the variable, we specify the location of the, of the model which we're gonna use. Mobile net v2, you can see here classification and the version four. Here you specify the shape of the image. So each neural network of this kind is expecting an image in, in a particular shape in order to work with it. And in this case, it's expecting the resolution of 224 by 224 pixels. 
loading the model is as simple as tfkera sequential hub which is the uh, object of the tensorflow hub which i installed here keras layer here you specify the uh, url of the model and then you specify the input shape as you can see i'm adding one additional dimension of the size 3 and it's because we will work with the jpegs and jpegs in general consists of each pixel consists of three numbers the number of red the number of green and the number of blue that's the reason why we have this th a third dimension of of the size 3 for these three numbers then i'm also loading the layer uh, the labels and the reason for this is that each classifier will output a value a numerical value but we want to translate this value inside the string inside the text and in order to do this you need to map it to the labels which was the classifier trained on in this case uh, the mobile net v2 was trained on 1001 classes labels so you can imagine for example if you have a classifier which is recognizing cats and dogs, you have only two labels, cat and dog. In this case, the neural network has had 1001 labels, right? You can see all the labels here. So this network is able to distinguish between background, tench, goldfish, great white shark, blah, 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 and all these 1001 labels. I list them here. So if you do this, do this, yeah, it takes some time, this, this you will see uh, what are the labels. And the, for the purpose of this example, we're gonna predict on my custom images, right? And in order to do this, you need this library, which is called the pillow library. And we are using the image object, which you can simply open the image with. So here, as you can see, I have three images. One of them is the IT guy, Michal, the most famous YouTuber. Then there is the pier, a green pier, and then there is a scorpion, right? So if you go here, here is the simple code for loading the image. It's as simple as specifying the location and then opening it with the image object of the pillow uh, library, which I showed you, and specifying the resolution size. Then I'm dividing the dimensions, uh, sorry, the values of the array by 255. A reason for doing that this is because the neural network is expecting the values from 0 to 1. And uh, inside uh, the image, if you open the image, are the values from 0 to 255. And then I'm just putting it as an array. So as you can see here, I'm loading the image as a NumPy array. So if I comment everything but this and run this funny thing, you can see that my image is of size 224, 224 by 3. And by, by running it as simple as this, I'm creating from this uh, and I'm adding another dimension and and the reason for doing this is that the neural network is expecting an array of image objects right which is called batch this is this network is able to predict in batches in our case the batch will consist only of one image inside there you can predict as many images at the same time as you want and this makes the neural network more effective. So when I will just uncomment this thing, I'm just predicting upon the classifier and here this will create the result. And if you look, this result is of shape one, uh, so one row and 1001 columns. What does it mean? For each of the predicted label, the neural network is returning a probability how likely it is that the image was that kind of object right so we will have a, a number for uh, for I don't know uh, Kelpie for Commodore right and then we are running here a uh, NumPy argmax which is returning the maximum probability of this array of probabilities and then we are returning just the position in the array so by running this, we see that the highest probability was on the position 72, right? And then with this command here, image labels, we can access the, 72, the, the, the 72nd position in this array and retrieve the label name. It's simple as this. Moreover, I'm printing the image with plot in show and uh, setting the axis off because this is dedicated for plotting the charts, but we are now cheating a little bit and plotting the image. And if you can see, as you can see, if I run this, the prediction was the scorpion, right? Let's run a second example with the peer. And as you can see, by running this, the output will be Granny Smith, which if I'm correct, is a kind of an apple, a green apple. So you can see there are some like 
uh, uh, like it's not 100% all the time, but it's quite impressive how the, this image were never shown to the neural network during the training and the neural network is able to on 100% on to predict the scorpion and it's like just make a small mistake between apple and pear, right? But maybe some of the guys or the people out there will also think that this is apple instead of a pear. Okay, and what happened if I put there the IT guy? Ah yeah, the IT guy is my special one. So if I put there the IT guy, it says it's a suit because I think most of the cases when the neural network saw a guy was wearing a suit, right? And this part of my shirt looks a little bit like suit. So we can think of it as, as quite uh, accurate prediction. Okay guys, this, this is the, the example here. Now some of you may say, well Michael, thank you for the technical part and for, for all this stuff, but for us is this just a black box, right? I'm importing some stuff from somewhere, I'm putting some input, getting some output, and I don't really understand what is the mobile net v2. Now in order to understand the neural networks, you need a lot of uh, mathematical knowledge. I can explain this, but not in this video. I would like to just tell you that the mobile net v2 is a very small neural network. There are much bigger ones, which are dedicated for predicting much more classes and which can be much more accurate. The advantage of the mobile net v2 is that it can be fit into a mobile device, like a Google Pixel phone. So as you can imagine, this network is very small and the authors needed only 143 milliseconds of the CPU time on the Google Pixel 1 device during prediction leveraging this neural network. Yeah, of course, there is some trade-off. The accuracy is not as high as uh, the accuracy in the big neural networks. But the authors report the accuracy of 72% at the top one score, which is quite high for a neural network that's small. Now, in order to make this neural network very small, authors are not using a conventional convolutional architectures, right? With a lot of convolutional layers and filters and, and stuff like this. In order to achieve this, authors use a very smaller architecture, leveraging the technique which is called depth vice separable convolution. Now I will not go into details of this technique, but again, as I said, I can make these videos for you. I just need to see that you are interested in. Okay guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope I will see you in the next video where we can talk about artificial neural networks, Docker or computer science. Thank you very much for watching.